Well, hello there, and welcome to this episode of The Terry Cole Show. That I want to start with a question. Do you ever have someone use guilt to try to get you to do what they want you to do? Or do you ever have someone who flatters you and tells you all these amazing things about you and then hits you up for something directly following that flattery? Anybody? Okay, well, those are both emotional manipulation tactics. And in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the top most commonly used manipulation tactics and help you understand why you might be falling victim to this if you are in your life and some ideas of how to avoid it. So, hey, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, before we get started, please introduce yourself in the comments below because we are a friendly group and make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell icon so that you'll get notified everything I do some, every time I do something new, which is every Tuesday and every Thursday. And hey, I wouldn't want you to miss a thing. So go subscribe, hit the little bell. If you don't know me, my name is Terry Cole. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, a relationship expert, and the author of Boundary Boss. Right there. See it? You can get that at BoundaryBossBook.com and anywhere and everywhere that fine books are sold. So as always, I want to say thank you for all your participation in this YouTube channel. I super um, appreciate you being here and how active you guys are. So I love to feature and say thank you to someone for their comment and share the comment with you. You know, I read all the comments because it's my favorite thing to do. So from Sir Ken's, the comment is under the episode called Seven Mother Types and Emotional Impact. And Sir Ken's says, thank you, Terry, for continuing to make this content. I know your channel is geared more towards women, but I'm a 20, 28 year old um, Hispanic male and all your videos that I've watched resonate with me also. I have an emotionally neglectful mother that now has a hoarding addiction. I've just now come to the conclusion why so many negative things have happened in my life and why I can't seem to overcome them, but I'm getting the help now in therapy. Good for you, Sir Kens. And I, listen, everyone is welcome here. No matter what your gender identification, you are welcome here, everybody. So thank you for saying that. Now let's move on to today's content. For clarity, let's just start by saying all people can be manipulative at times, right? We're, we're all human. This is part of the human condition. That's not really what I'm talking about today. Today, we're really talking about something that is an ongoing or chronic situation. So emotional manipulation, when does it occur? When a manipulative person is seeking power over someone else and employ, employs like exploitive ways of getting it, right? They're ongoing, these tactics, and coercive or unethical behavior driven by the goal of getting control of the other person for the, the manipulator's own gain, basically. So that's what we're talking about. It's, so, it's almost like getting what you want at any cost, not caring what you need to do to get what you want. So I'm gonna list the most popular ones. We'll talk a little bit about them. I start with um, unearned closeness. I recently read that description for love bombing and I really loved it. Many of you probably are familiar with the term love bombing, but unearned closeness, right? Yeah, like we're trying to accelerate the timeline by saying how amazing you are, telling you everything that's great, buying you gifts, um, wanting to see you all the time. But again, love bombing, it, it's like a trap. If someone is doing this and if it seems too, too good, right? Too good to be true or too much too soon is a lot of what my therapy clients would describe how love bombing feels. You want to be very wary of that because what ends up happening is a cycle of abuse continues from once they actually snare you in their web, it's very difficult to get out because a lot of people don't even know that unconsciously we're continuing to seek um, the love bombing. We want them to go back to being as loving and complimentary and all of those things that they were before things turned. So it's almost like um, an addict romancing the high, like chasing the high. You want to go back to how it felt then, but it will never be what it was then. This is the same thing with love bombing. Um, another tactic is just bold-faced lying. Just people who 
have no qualms about being straight up dishonest to um, get what they want from you. So this can fall into the category of um, gaslighting as well, because if you confront someone who's trying to manipulate you, um, they said they, they committed to helping you with something, they may say right to your face, I never said that. And now where do you go from there? And what ends up happening when we really are dealing with gaslighting is that you start not trusting your own sense of reality in the world. You start um, thinking that you're like losing your grasp on reality because again, emotional manipulators are can be very cunning. They can be very convincing as if they're coming from a good place, right? So it, it may not be as obvious as I'm saying right now, right? With gaslighting, you know, a lot of times, and I was going to bring this in as one of the, one of the top manipulation tactics, might as well talk about it right now, which is faux concern. So have you ever had someone act like, Hey babe, I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you. You, you really seem like you're losing it. Um, they also can use fake concern as a way of making you feel like something's really wrong with you. And I called it faux concern with a side of peer pressure because they may also say, you know, I mean, Bob said something the other day about the fact that he thought you were losing it, but I, I stood up for you. But now I, I kind of think Bob might, ha might be onto something. So now you're like, oh my God. So now you think I'm losing it and Bob thinks I'm losing it. Again, it's a manipulation tactic to be like, everyone thinks that you're nuts. You are the problem is basically what they're, they're saying. Again, keep in mind, all of this leading to them getting you to do what they want you to do, whatever it may be, whatever they want from you. This is what emotional manipulation is all about. Ultimately, get the other person getting what they want, but really having control over the person who is being victimized with this. Um, another tactic of emotional manipulation is guilt tripping, right? They try to make you feel responsible or bad um, about your actions. They use what they've done for you in the past as a lever of control. Um, if it weren't for me, you wouldn't even have a car right now. I'm the one who found that car or I financed that. Or, um, if it was, if it wasn't for me doing X, Y, and Z, you wouldn't be X, Y, and Z. And again, bringing it back to themselves as the hero and you as the person who owes them, right? Um, and even something as simple as they're having people over and they invite you to go and you don't want to go and they say, well, if you're not going to come, then I'm, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to have anybody. Like you just ruined the party somehow, even though they just asked you. So again, be mindful of where you feel this. And in the guide, which you can get at terrycole.com forward slash guide, I'm giving you a couple of questions that you can answer to really sort of drill down into, if you are having these, some of these experiences that I'm sharing with you, why, right? Because you're going to, th this could be familiar to you in some way. So we're going to do some kind of a manipulation blueprint of, is this the way you were raised? Is this how you were treated? Or is it how you saw the adults in your life treat each other? But we will get to that. Um, another manipulation tactic is, I called it blowing sunshine up your ass, which is really just flattery. So it can be really um, hard to discern between someone giving you an authentic compliment, which really does feel good, and somebody flattering you with an ulterior motive. They're flattering you because they want something from you. Um, I can always feel the difference myself personally. Um, and I always feel like if someone is flattering me, I feel like they're manipulating me. Like I actually feel it. It makes me so uncomfortable and it actually makes me so mad because it's not necessary and it won't work 
for me personally, but I don't know why. I mean, listen, we, we all have our Achilles of why, why would that piss me off more than other things? I don't know, but I can be honest and say it really does. I, I'm, I'm so uncomfortable. Not when someone's given me an authentic compliment. I've learned over the many years to be in acceptance and to be grateful for a real compliment. And that is a skill right there to not reject it. It, it took so long to learn that somebody giving you an authentic compliment is a gift. And if somebody handed you a, you know, a Tiffany's blue box, think of it that way. Think of the compliments, real compliments as that. You would not reject them. You would not tell them why the compliment isn't true. You would not take that Tiffany's box and throw it on the ground and stomp on it, would you? Of course not. So think about it that way. But when someone is flattering for the purpose of emotional manipulation, that feels very different for me personally. So it's like a, a compliment. There's a sincerity in what the person is saying. You can feel that sincerity where blowing sm uh, sunshine up your butt feels more like, um, there's an expectation, right? There's an exchange. I'm going to say this nice thing to you and then I'm going to hit you up for something. So be very mindful of that. And yet it takes a minute to be able to make the distinction between those two things. Uh, another one, and this is not what I'm going to say, one of my faves, that sounds weird, but this is one that is complicated to understand, but it's so common. I think it was really important to keep on the list, which is projection, which means someone is projecting their feelings that they are having onto you and acting like you are having those feelings. So I always give this example. If there's a new person at work and you don't like Sally for some reason, you don't even know why, you don't even know her, but you don't like that about yourself, right? This is kind of different because there's an unconscious, projection is mostly an unconscious process, but it can still be a form of manipulation anyway. So you don't like the fact that you don't like Sally when you don't even know her. And so suddenly you start saying to your partner or to your friends, I got this new chick at work, Sally. And like, I swear to God, she hates me. I don't know why Sally doesn't like me. And you're like, oh, Sally doesn't even know you. You don't like Sally, which is what is happening. And what it does is, why is projection uh, a psychological defense mechanism? Because it is, is that it lets you off the hook the person having the disavowed feeling or the feeling that you don't like. Um, because now you, instead of experiencing it coming from you, you are experiencing it coming at you. So you see the difference there? Yes. Another thing to watch when it comes to projection is be very mindful of your own positive projection. A lot of times we will, um, assign attributes to other people that they don't actually possess, but there are things that we possess. If you're a decent person, you may make an assumption. Maybe you're in a relationship with a, an emotional manipulator and you may make the assumption that that person is like you in a positive way. And not all people are like you. So it's important not to put yourself in the line of fire with someone like this, that we really don't know if they are like you, we need evidence. So before we decide that someone is decent or someone is someone who's sort of worth our time, over time, we need evidence, which is another reason why love bombing, which can also go into this unearned closeness or sort of this insta intimacy is something that is to raise red flags for you. If someone is pushing this agenda and wants to spend all this time with you and is wanting you to tell them your, you know, your deepest, your darkest, your whole entire life story by the, the second date, that's not how true intimacy is built. It's not real intimacy if it happens in a date or two dates. It's just giving information. And if the person is an emotional manipulator, it is information that they will use against you 
later because that's what emotional manipulators do. So let's think about the difference between unhealthy relationships. There's a lot of emotional manipulation that is going on in healthy relationships. There's reciprocity, right? There's cooperation. It's not something that someone who's an emotional manipulator can even do because they don't want to lose control. That, that's their whole trip. So someone who really is um, entrenched in these behaviors, it would be very difficult to change them. Now, if somebody does some of these, like a lot of people use guilt tripping, that's a more common manipulation tactic, but that doesn't necessarily mean the person's behavior is toxic. This is where boundaries come in. This is where, if we're gonna move into like, what can you do if you're in these situations? Boundaries, right? Be clear about what your boundaries are. Have a conversation about not appreciating someone throwing it in your face. If someone's like, yeah, well, I did that for you, I will say, and you did, I assumed you did that of your own free will. I didn't know that that was a transactional interaction because there is no clear agreement to that. Like I will not be manipulated by someone who does something with their own agenda and then thinks I owe them, because I don't. I didn't ask you to do that thing, that, that, that's on you. But as you get better and better with your boundaries, <clears throat> I wrote a whole book about it, Boundary Boss, yeah, you can get it. It gets easier and easier to um, call out manipulation, to set a limit with people who are emotionally manipulative, because listen, we, I, I won't come from the point of view that every person who's emotionally manipulative is necessarily an abuser. That's not what, what I'm saying. A lot of times it's learned behavior. And if you set a limit, the person will be like, oh, okay, I, I didn't realize. I, I actually had, um, a, when I was seeing couples back in the day, uh, one of the husband was a screamer and this was the big, one of the biggest complaints that the wife had. And when they first came into session, the husband said, I thought this is what everyone does. This is how my parents did it. Like, I thought this is what married people do when there's a problem, is you just scream it out and that's how you figure it out. And like, he was being completely sincere. He was not, he was no mastermind abuser. He was really like, I thought, I didn't even know there was another way. And I was like, okay, well, there's another way and you screaming is a major problem in your marriage. But that's what I'm talking about with learned behavior, that someone, it might just be learned behavior and not necessarily um, them being an abuser, but that doesn't mean you put up with it, right? It, we still have to draw boundaries, it's really important. So in the guide, I'm gonna give you uh, a couple of blueprint questions so you can have a, a deeper understanding if you have been or are vulnerable to emotional manipulation tactics, why that is. We're gonna do um, a manipulation resentment inventory. Just a couple of questions again, to see what relationships in your life right now. Are you feeling resentment because they are manipulating you or attempting to? Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about how to have assertive boundaries, right? Just a little bit of language of how do you confront, like I just, like I just shared with you. How do we, we point it out? How do we set a limit? How do we step back? And another idea, another thought is if you're going through this in any relationship in your life, don't keep it a secret. Talk about it with the person if it's safe to do so, but talk about it with other people who you trust. Don't let shame about what's happening or even your confusion let you silently suffer because you don't deserve this. And you can learn the skills once you understand yourself more to not be in uh, a situation where you are being the victim of emotional manipulation. And hey, you might be the perpetrator of emotional manipulation. You can flip this entire episode and look at it from the point of view of what you are doing. And either way, it's possible to change as long as you want to. So. Get the guide at terrycole.com forward slash guide. I really hope that this added value to your life. And as always, take care of you.